Onto some new pre-workout at the moment, Rich Piana's 5150. It is actually as crazy as he looks on the pack. It's got 400 milligrams of caffeine. It's the highest dosing caffeine pre-workout there is. And his uh, pretty much pump product is called Full As Fuck. It is just an overdosed nitric oxide booster. It is actually crazy. And when you're doing a cut, wow, it comes in handy to have a stimulant like that. But in saying that, you do also want to operate off normal energy as well. If you go too bonkers on synthetic energy like your caffeine and other stimulants, you're going to burn out or you're going to crash and you're going to feel even worse. Uh, just remember I'm also taking my fat burner in the morning you know, so uh, there's quite a bit of caffeine going on uh, so I'll obviously have some days off just to make sure that my receptors and everything uh, reset if you don't do that your thyroid's gonna burn out and you're gonna feel crap like can't even explain how bad it is um, and you probably just won't make it through the day that's how bad it'll be uh, you pretty much want to sleep all the time until your thyroid will pretty much give you permission to get out of bed. All right, so your body's gonna do what it needs and that includes shutting you down uh, if you go too bonkers. Yeah, to be careful, uh, take it when you need it. About to jump into my cardio, got my headphones on, ready. And one additional extra I'm going to add today is my elevation mask. Right, so restricting your breathing is going to pretty much improve your cardiovascular. Apparently it's like upwards of 20% at least, uh, just restricting your breathing. And I think it's just good anyway. Really good for asthma sufferers really to train their breathing, train their lungs uh, to be able to breathe a lot better. So I've got asthma, so it's really good. Um, not very good when you're doing it, it's pretty freaking hard, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So look at it like you're doing Let's say you're doing 20 minutes of cardio, it's like you've done 30 minutes of cardio. That's almost the equivalent. I wouldn't say just reduce your cardio, just keep doing it the same, you're just getting more out of it in the same amount of time. That was hectic. There's so much sweat going into the mask. You can see it like spraying at the front. Like crazy, look at it, it's all pulling. You can see that, it's gonna focus. Ew. So I was like sucking in sweat, spitting it out. But that is definitely worth it. I think they go for about 120 bucks. But it's like, it's kind of weird. It was like it was easier, I mean I've done it before. Thought I'd give another explanation what it feels like. It's like, do the same cardio, it's harder, yet it's easier. So your muscles can kind of put up with it a bit better. And I think the reason behind that is because you focus on your breathing so much more. So you're forced to saturate your lungs with oxygen. So your muscles can technically operate a bit more efficiently, but it gets you sweat up like crazy. It was good, gotta dry it out. So I just finished my cardio and I'm not hungry. All right, so I'll get this question all the time. If something's in your diet plan or whenever, let's say you're not even on a diet plan, you're just going about your day normal and you're not hungry and it's kind of time to eat. So like if you wanna keep that consistency up to keep your metabolism up, let's say you don't get hungry, all right? Still eat, even though it might not be too much, still try to eat, all right? I get asked that question so much, like, I think a lot of people go off, just eat when you're hungry. Uh, to think of food like automatic exercise, when you consume food, good quality foods that is, uh, so no refined sugars or anything, if it's like good fats, good protein, low GI carbs, then your body actually has to work. The metabolism in your body is going to rise up to be able to crank out the fuel out of that uh, food. All right, so yeah, think of it like free exercise and you just eat. That's all you're doing, you're eating. Not only that, it's fuel for the, the rest of the day, otherwise you're gonna feel like crap for 
whenever you, uh, you get hungry, all right? Your metabolism is gonna really rock it down and you're just gonna have to pick it back up again. Like I've said in the previous videos, think of your metabolism like your firewood. You wanna keep it consistent and even if you don't get hungry, still eat, all right? It's gonna keep your metabolism up and it's gonna make you feel good. So why not give your body energy while you can and even when you're not hungry, all right? So it's gonna just keep that energy nice and smooth. About to train the shoulders. Just getting in some chicken and sweet potato. About to have my pre-workout. The one I'm having at the moment, the old one was 51.50 by Rich Piana. Now Rich Piana's got another one. It's called Kill It. Now this one's a little less or low key compared to his other one, 51.50. This one has about 400 milligram of caffeine plus synephrine, so it's pretty much speed. It was honestly like too much. And this one's just your normal, normal pre-workout with your caffeine and your other goodies just to help you get through your workout. But in regards to pre-workouts, you don't want to be, you don't want two full-on pre-workouts and you don't want to completely fry your system because what's going to happen is your metabolism is going to go really high, which is good, but what goes up must come down. All right? So just be careful of that, make sure you as well as having nice and steady energy levels, your metabolism is steady with synthetic stimulants uh, like pre-workout, so just be careful of that one. Waiting for my veggies to boil. It's gonna go into my bowl of tuna. When you're that hungry, this is like watching paint dry. It is torture. God damn. Make sure you cook your food before. Sometimes even when it's in the microwave, I feel like ripping it out of the microwave halfway through just to get it in. It's all good, be patient. Hands down one of my favorite meals when it comes to night time. Simple yet so satisfying. Veggies and tuna. Nice fibrous green carbs. Nice lean protein. So I went for another shop this morning and thought I might show you guys some of the handy things that I get to help me save time. I mean, I do have the facilities, but sometimes I'm that on the go that, yeah, it's a lot better if I run out of any pre-prep meals and I don't have time to cook the night before because I get home so late. Then I can just get these bad boys. So these are just cups of rice. Uh, make sure they fit your calories. Just your cans of tuna, no drain. And then your tuna and beans. Sometimes they fit your macros so well and easy. Um, and yeah, other things like having my veggies prepared. So I've got a bunch of cut up veggies, all snap frozen, ready to go to be poured out from a container to weigh. And then all my kale and spinach in this container. So I just pull it out of there, straight into the smoothies. Bam. Alrighty, so I woke up late today because I had a late night last night. Got home at like 12. Someone opened up for me this morning. And instead of doing my cardio fasted, uh, I was alternatively gonna think, <clears throat> maybe just eat like normal, get my metabolism going with my food. And then when my carbs are low at night, I can have it then. So that's one alternative you can do. All right, so never do cardio, I say, around when you have carbs. I just don't see the point. You're gonna pretty much use your carbs as your energy source for your cardio. You're pretty much working off what you just ate. All right, alternatively, I'm going to go with bare minimum because I gotta wait for a client, that's all. Um, I'm just gonna have an egg. I'm an egg and coffee. All right, so no carbs, no carbs at all, and then I'll jump into my cardio and then have the rest of my breakfast after. It's for AKA cardio. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it'll be late day reckon? today, I'll tell you. <laughs> yep, and ankle day, and knee day. How much does a big day? stag weigh? <laughs> um, 300 kilos. Oh, fuck yeah. So you've got to cut it into bits. <laughs> that's, so, my, that's my deadlift. We'll yeah. just get that happening. Hunting. 
hunting for some fat burn. Burning fat. I think we lost Nath. He's lost with the stags. Right. Yes, we've got to blow bottles up. So we didn't hit any deer or stag, but we hit some bottles. <laughs> so, on the way home from King Valley, went for a massive hike today and I kept all my food around about the same. Uh, it is the third change of the diet plan, so I'm towards obviously the lower end or the lower carb end because I'm at the end of the week my refeed's tomorrow um, so I'm feeling a little bit tired got a, another two hours drive drives only about three and a half hours feel a little bit sluggish so I went to get uh, an espresso just to nip me up a little bit and the coffee machine was down so next best thing it's not very good but it is a V right, it is sugar free so I'm not adding any of the carbs uh, my insulin's not going to be spiked or anything, so keeping that down. But the only bad thing about these sugar-free drinks, a lot of people think they're getting away with no calories in the system. Um, the one thing you got to be careful of is the ingredients that they chuck in to sweeten it. All right, so the synthetic sweeteners. Some drinks are using stevia now, which is a bit better. It still contains a little bit of carbs. It's a form of sugar, but a lot lighter. But the synthetic chemicals that are in these sugar-free drinks that you think you're getting away with are very, very acidic to the body. All right, it's that acidic that it chucks your pH level out, which I'm probably going to do a blog on. If your pH level is out, all your vitamins and minerals are going to be used up to pretty much get your pH level back to normal. And while that pH is out of whack, all right, your fat burning efficiency is going to be lowered as well as everything else and you're going to feel tired especially after the caffeine goes away from this drink you may feel like absolute crap all right so that's what you really want to be careful of especially if you're drinking these day in day out all right just be careful of the sugar free drink it's a whole gimmick you'd rather honestly go for an espresso uh, that's pure just caffeine back to refeed Woo! most exciting day of the week Alright, uh, so I'm starting off, it is 8 o'clock, just opened up the gym, and I'm going to start off with some um, gluten-free porridge, uh, so it's going whacking in the microwave, and I'm going to chuck some peanut butter, and some honey, and some toast, nice and simple, alright, this is only 8am, 9.30, I'll be at Billy's Kitchen getting some mad feed, maybe a coffee and some smashed avo, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> And to refeed number two. Yeah. Refeed number two. Meal yeah. drink yeah. with the fam. Yeah. In, uh, Billy's kitchen, as always. <laughs> Refeeds everywhere. Refeed that for everybody. <laughs> Refeeding donuts. <laughs> What's the fuck? So I got through two, Morgan got through one, we're having a coffee, she doesn't look fucked, I feel fucked, and we're gonna have some more breakfast. Eggs. Eggs, and I'm gonna have green eggs. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> oh, I don't know what it tastes like. Oh no! Dum 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 dum. I'm getting ripped. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to do with my reef feed. So, got your banana. 
Get a teaspoon. Oh, get this. Teaspoon of peanut butter. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. That banana just went from like 100 calories to it turns out to be about 850. You gonna have that one? Kin. Okay. Non alcoholic, no fret, beef pad diet, about 800 calories. Going to the movies, gotta get my popcorn. The movie wouldn't be a movie without popcorn, and I can fit it in my refeed. Walk that away to finish off the refeed, then with good old cold rock. Woo! What better way to end a refeed with a bit of cold rock? This thing was off its head. Uh, so I'm probably having it a bit late at night. Um, but really had to get those 5,000 calories in. I was probably a little bit under this, definitely rocketed it over. Surely this thing for the weight, it's like 450 grams. And if I'm going by regular, regular ice cream, it's yeah, probably definitely pushing up over the six even seven hundred calories so yeah five and a half thousand calories the calories that you want to be filling your muscles with all right so this is what happens your glycogen is depleted from the muscle when you lower your carbs during the week lower the carbs the more fat burn but unfortunately the less energy you have and that's that lack of energy or strength that you feel now the purpose of the refeed is to pretty much replenish your glycogen stores with carbs all right so Obviously, high GI sugary foods isn't the best way to go, but at least make sure there is some good quality carbohydrates and pretty much replenished in the system. Quality, quality carbs. Uh, otherwise, you may be feeling a bit crappier uh, during the week after your refeed. All right, so you want to make sure you're still enjoying yourself, but at the same time, you want to be able to push on next week with enough motivation to get through the week. All right, and one thing I want to actually say, just after that ice cream, that's a crap load of sugar. I am so thirsty. All I can think about right now is water. Uh, it's got to be saying something. Another quick tip, if you're thirsty, you're dehydrated already. All right, so if you're thirsty, you're way behind on getting water in. Take that note in. What's happening, guys? It is halfway now, so week number four. Next week is week number five. As you can tell, I've got a little bit of energy because once again, it's a refeed. Now, I think I've really got to do these weigh-ins or <laughs> these logs at the start of the day. I'm feeling so bloated because of the amount of food that I've eaten a day and my body's really just not used to it. What I start off with, just a mad bowl of porridge in the morning, gluten-free of course. And then I went to uh, Billy's Kitchen for my sister's birthday, had some smashed avocado, went to donut time in the city, smashed down some donuts, plus a breakfast. Breakfast over there, it was about 12, but served up a mad feast. Got back to the gym, ate some more, uh, before my workout and then after my workout, and now I'm about to go out for dinner. So just absolutely chock blocking the food in. Pretty swollen in the stomach, but as for everything else, today's workout was Phenomenal, uh, got some mad pumps, mad energy, but then back at it again next week. As for this week's results, I'm super pumped to share with you that I've actually gone down half a kilo, all right, so half of one kilo, but down 2%. Now that's really, really what we're looking for. So like I said last week, I lost six kilos. Now that might not have all been fat, all right? So like I've said in my other logs or in the blog, Scales aren't everything and they're not everything because that measurement could have been water as well All right, so as good as it looked for me Sometimes it's not a good thing if it's all weight All right, so you want to look at what is actually going on There's a lot to do with what's going on in terms of your body a lot of different densities uh, That come down to weight so it could be muscle could be water could be fat 
uh, hopefully your bone doesn't go down but those are the three main crucial ones and really what you want to do is let's say for a bodybuilder aspect you want to keep the size obviously it's going to go down a little bit because that fat's going to take up the space uh, so for instance I've actually been getting comments this week, are you getting bigger, Mike? But I'm actually not. My measurements are going down. So, for example, my biceps are getting technically smaller, but the muscles are staying there. Now, what I meant before was I went down half of one kilo, but down 2% body fat. That's what we really, really want to look at. You know, so, the results may not have been 100% true, but you want to drop more body fat then you do want to drop weight. All right? So that almost doesn't make sense. I lost weight, but even more uh, body fat. So what that technically means is I've actually gained muscle. Now I really doubt that because only this week I've actually been going down in weights, very, very minuscule. So let's say for example, one of my shoulder presses uh, went down just a few reps. It could have been the day, it could have been my sleep, it could have been a range of things. But obviously when I'm in that deficit state and I'm like carb depleted by the end of the day, I'm just getting infuriated in myself uh, because I want to really keep those weights there. Uh, another one thing that I want to add to this log before it ends, is with the weight side of things because I don't do very many uh, weight training logs in this. I just want to include this. You really want to keep your weights as high as you can. All right? don't, don't think that going down in weights and more reps are going to burn more fat. All right? It's not. What's going to happen is you're going into a deficit. So your body's thinking, well, we're not getting enough nutrients for the muscle. Now, if we're not staying at a high enough weight or we're not pumping out as much weight as we used to, then your body's thinking, well, we don't even need this size because we're not lifting those weights anymore. So don't ever consider going down in weight to sacrifice for more reps. All right, you always want to keep your weight where it is, keep on the same training, if not push even harder. All right, you want to keep that weight. If you can gain weight, or if you can put on the kilos in terms of what you're lifting, absolutely fantastic. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it as long as you're losing body fat. But it is a very low chance, all right? Because you're giving yourself less nutrients than your body needs, you really want to just try hang on to whatever you've got in terms of strength. All right, so as for this week's results, I actually went down body fat and weight Technically, it looks like I've gained muscle, but probably haven't. But the best part about it is I've most likely lost a lot of fat. I can definitely see it in myself in the mirror. Maybe not now for my abs because my stomach's a little bit bloating. But everything else, we're coming back. Woo! Pretty pumped, guys. Anyway, this is week four. Next week, on to week five. Stay tuned. Getting some more tips, helping you on your weight loss journey. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you liked the video guys, jump across to our YouTube channel and give that a subscribe to keep up to date on our weekly motivation and tips to help you on your weight loss journey. Also take a look at the videos down below for some humor, some laughs and some free workouts and more motivation. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.